Okay, here are some of our basic antiderivatives. Some of these you have memorized, some of them like I've given to you before in a derivative table, but like this first chunk, you should have all these memorized. So we know, for example, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. The derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. Power rule here, derivative of a constant is zero. In this table then, now we're gonna go backwards. Now we're gonna start with this side and work our way backwards. So the antiderivative of a constant will be a linear function because the derivative of this linear function would be a constant. Here is our power rule for antiderivatives. Instead of multiplying by the old exponent and subtracting one, when we go backwards, we add one to the exponent and then divide by the new exponent. A lot of mistakes happen right here. You just, you got to just work a bunch of these and practice this. When we're taking the antiderivative of x to some power, we raise up the exponent and divide by the new exponent. And of course, all the way down, see, we got a plus c on all of our antiderivatives. Here, you're going to mess up the signs on these four. It's really easy to get your pluses and minuses mixed up. What you got to memorize above all else, derivative of sine is positive cosine. That's the main one. Then from there, you can figure out who's plus and who's minus. So derivative of regular sine is regular cosine. Derivative of cosine then is negative sine because the other one had the positive. Going backwards, you got to remember these formulas to figure out these formulas. The antiderivative of cosine is regular sine because we're going backwards. I'm going from here back to there. The antiderivative of negative sine would be positive cosine. So the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. Or I guess another way to remember this is taking the derivative, sine gives you positive cosine. Taking the antiderivative, it's the other way around. Antiderivative of positive sine is negative cosine. And here are all of our other formulas we've had. Okay, some quick properties of indefinite integrals. When we were taking derivatives, we had product rule, we had quotient rule, chain rule. We do not have equivalent rules going backwards. There is no product rule for antiderivatives. It doesn't exist. What we're going to do later in a future video is see how to take what we learned for product rule and kind of fudge it into a formula for antiderivatives. And we call that integration by parts. But it is very complicated. It is not just product rule backwards. Similarly for quotient rule. Chain rule. There is a way to undo chain rule. We call that integration by substitution. But what I want you to know is that the antiderivative of f times g dx is not the antiderivative of f times the antiderivative of g. You cannot split up a product of antiderivatives. You couldn't with derivatives either. We would have used product rule. Going backwards, it's much more complicated. We learned something called by integration by parts. What you can do, however, the integral, the antiderivative is a linear operator, meaning you can distribute over addition and subtraction, and you can factor constants out. 
So if you've got a bunch of stuff added together, you can just do the antiderivative one term at a time. If you've got a constant inside, you're allowed to pull a constant out and then do the antiderivative. And we'll do a bunch of examples today and you'll see that.